The bandwidth of a signal or the bandwidth of a channel are very important concepts in digital communications. However, this concept of bandwidth can be a little confusing. In fact, there are several definitions of what the bandwidth of a signal is, and I'd like to go over that with you now. So this is part, again, of a review, if you will, of topics that you've perhaps seen earlier. This is covered in section 1.7 of the most recent edition of the Sklar uh, textbooks on digital communications. So the first idea is what is a band-limited signal? So a band-limited signal is a signal by definition which is zero outside of a given uh, frequency range. So suppose here we look at this diagram for this triangular spectrum, and here we have the frequency domain on the right. And if I have a triangular spectrum, well clearly it is band-limited. Outside the end of this uh, triangle, the signal is completely zero. So the signal is limited to a given uh, band, uh, frequency band. Now if I recall my Fourier analysis, I know that the inverse Fourier transform of a triangle is a square uh, sinc function. And so in the time domain, uh, I would see this uh, uh, triangular function would have infinite time support from minus infinity to infinity. So that's one aspect of a band-limited signal, is that if it is limited to a given frequency, a finite frequency band, that must require that the signal in the time domain have infinite support. Imagine now that instead I had a triangular in, uh, pulse in the time domain. Well, of course, I would have the sinc squared in the frequency domain. Uh, so there is this um, result from the mathematics of Fourier analysis that if a pulse is limited in time, then it cannot be limited in bandwidth. So by definition, a band, the band-limited signal has infinite time support and a band uh, time-limited signal has infinite frequency support. So if I wanted to talk about the bandwidth of a signal, well, it's quite clear what the bandwidth here is, right? Uh, after a certain frequency, it stops. But how would I come up with the definition of what the bandwidth is of this where it never completely goes to zero? And that's the challenge in having a bandwidth definition because most of the signals that are of interest, perhaps, in communications are signals that start at one point and at another point, so they're time limited, which means that they will not be band limited. And so that is a little bit of the motivation about why we have to think about some alternate definitions of bandwidth. So this is just a slide where I uh, say pretty much the same thing. A time limited signal cannot be band limited. So and given that the only signals that in the history of digital communications are of interest didn't start until recently. So for sure, uh, there are no band-limited signals. Of course, um, we know that there's to somewhat an approximation and uh, that if the um, uh, frequency domain, for instance, if I look here, I can imagine, just as a concept, when I'm trying to think of how would I define bandwidth, that somehow the bandwidth roll-off, how quickly it goes to zero, will have an impact. So uh, somebody, so the bandwidth of the signal must somehow depend on this uh, steepness of the roll-off. So a steeper roll-off would be less wide than one that drops off less frequency, uh, less quickly. So how can I use this concept to quantify bandwidth? even if it's not uh, particularly uh, band limited. So what I talk about, um, so far I talked about the bandwidth of a signal, but of course there's also the bandwidth of a channel. And I want to say for a communications course in particular, why the idea of bandwidth is really critical in our analysis. Imagine now that I have on this side two different kinds of signals that I'm trying to input across my channel. And here I have a couple illustrations of different channels as well. So the frequency response of the channel will also say which uh, frequency bands could be supported for a given transfer. For instance, in communications, we could use uh, twisted pair 
we could use a coaxial cable, we could use an optical fiber. All of these are different channels and each one of them can be described by a different frequency response. And some frequency response, for instance, for the optical fiber is extremely wide and for a twisted pair it's fairly uh, narrow. So channels will have their own uh, determinants of what their bandwidth is. Now imagine on the input side, I drew uh, two different uh, examples here. One is fairly narrow band, the other is much wider band. So what does that mean in terms of the communication signal? So this is a communication signal that I'm sending at fairly low bit rate. So I'm sending information fairly slowly, which means that the frequency occupancy is less. As I try and send information more rapidly, then my spectrum for my signal is going to get wider. Again, these are concepts we know uh, from Fourier analysis. So I can imagine in the first scenario, when I have a fairly narrow band signal and I'm trying to put it through a fairly wide band uh, channel, that this signal is going to come out of this channel pretty much unchanged. Remember, the output is the product of this with this. I'm pretty much where all the energy is for my signal my channel is pretty flat. So the output Y is going to look a lot like X. But what's going to happen in this poor situation down below? Here I'm sending a channel, uh, excuse me, a signal which is much wider than my uh, bandwidth of my channel. What's going to happen there? Severe distortion is going to happen. What I get out of this channel is not going to look much at all like what I put into it. So again, how am I going to decide how much information I can push through a given channel. For this, I need the concept of bandwidth to try and help me to quantify uh, signals and uh, the channels that we'll be working with. So all of this has been motivation. Why is it important to talk about bandwidth? And then I'll talk now about the various definitions that we use for bandwidth. And all of them are equally valid. There's not one definition which is right and the others are wrong. There are some which are more common, some which are less common, but they're all useful. And depending on the situation, I might draw on one or the other. And it's important that we not be fixated on one kind. Uh, here's a list of the bandwidth definitions which are covered in the book Sklar and which I'll be going over very quickly with you now. So the first is the easiest, it's the absolute bandwidth. So when something is band limited, then the definition is, is obvious. Uh, the 3dB bandwidth is probably one you have heard of the most common. It's very, very commonly uh, quoted in specifications for components. Noise equivalent bandwidth is one that we'll see uh, often in terms of analysis. If we want to come up with an analytic expression, we might use something about the noise equivalent bandwidth. And there's a couple of others which also come in uh, useful. Uh, null to null, fractional power, and the power spectral density bound. So I'll now go into the definitions in particular for these six cases. And again, the easiest case is the absolute bandwidth. Here I have a, a signal, a message to send where m of omega is really equal to zero uh, for all frequencies above some maximum uh, frequency. So in this case, the uh, bandwidth of the signal is clearly 2b, twice the maximum frequency uh, of the signal. And so this is uh, the easiest concept. Now if we look at the 3dB bandwidth, in this case consider a signal which doesn't have, it's impossible to give a definition for absolute bandwidth because uh, the uh, frequency response is non-zero uh, for um, arbitrarily large frequencies. In this case what we can define is we look at the amplitude of the signal at DC, and so the excuse me, the um, frequency uh, response of the excuse me, the frequency content at DC, which is amplitude A, and we look and we say when has that frequency content decreased by one half? So at which points does the amplitude, which is originally A, go down to A over two? And of course, a factor of two, if we look in dB, is 3 dB. So we call this the 3 dB bandwidth. So whichever bandwidth uh, frequency B that occurs at, then uh, this becomes what we call the 3 dB uh, bandwidth. 
Uh, sometimes we call this the full wave half maximum uh, bandwidth also would be another, another name we might uh, come up with. Uh, Uh, full width, half maximum, just uh, another way of saying uh, 3 dB. And again, it would be um, as I illustrated here. Noise equivalent bandwidth. Well, this is a little trickier. I take any arbitrary uh, frequency spectrum here and there's some value at DC, some amplitude at DC, which we call A again. And this time I look at what is the area under the curve. Remember I said that if I start with a uh, signal in the time domain, which is an L2, which is a square integrable function, then the energy will be finite. And the energy is going to be the area under the curve of the energy spectral density. So if I look here at the total area under the curve of the uh, ESD, the uh, energy spectral density, that gives me a number, the total energy. Now imagine that I drew a box. I drew a box which has the same height as this other uh, ESD at DC, so it always is height A, and I make this one a rectangle. And I keep adjusting the bandwidth until I get the area under the curve of this rectangle to be exactly equal to the area under the curve of this uh, arbitrary uh, form to the energy spectral density. Whatever bandwidth it is that makes this mathematically have the area under the curve be the same, that is what I use to, to define the bandwidth of the uh, signal. A little later, uh, we'll be talking about uh, additive white Gaussian noise. And from the characteristics of additive white Gaussian noise, we'll, we will see what the motivation was to call this noise equivalent. So for now, um, I'll just leave it as the name. And when we get to our discussion of noise, I'll come back to this and, and give you uh, a recall about why this name is particularly appropriate. Another definition is quite simple, and that is the null to null. So there's a main lobe to the uh, energy spectral density, and I can have one approximation being is just the bandwidth of that main lobe. So a uh, fairly simple uh, expression, especially for these analytical forms like the square wave or the, excuse me, a square pulse or a triangular pulse. Uh, these are places where the main lobe is, is quite easily defined. Uh, another very popular um, definition of bandwidth would be the fractional power bandwidth. And this is uh, directly related to this power of using the uh, energy spectral density as a way of specifying how much power is there concentrated in certain frequency bands. So suppose I think of the area under the curve from minus infinity to infinity to be the entire energy. And so here it is in the denominator here. Here's the total energy of the signal. And now I look at uh, energy within some given band uh, centered around DC. So as I make B, this B get larger and larger, well, I do the integral from minus B to B, and I look at how much energy is concentrated in this band and I can uh, vary this B until I attain a certain percentage of the energy. For instance, if I want to know uh, the 90% fractional power bandwidth, uh, I would just vary this until I find out uh, what value it is uh, that gives me that certain percentage. And the uh, last definition is somewhat similar. Instead of looking at the area of the curve, what I do is I take the idea of this 3 dB bandwidth and I make it sort of arbitrary. Suppose I didn't want to know when it's reduced by half, but rather when it's reduced uh, by some other uh, value. And so I can say I would like to have the um, bandwidth defined by kdB. 3 dB would give us the previous one. But uh, it could be the 10 dB, 6 dB, depending on what our application is. That might be a more useful measure of bandwidth. And so uh, just uh, uh, one of the ideas that we can see in the um, book 
is an illustration for, in particular, the triangularly shaped, uh, no, I'm sorry, for a, uh, I believe it's a rectangular pulse, then the um, ESD is a, no, I think it's a triangular pulse, and so I get a uh, sinus uh, squared. And it shows here in this illustration, first of all, the sink squared, which is the form of the energy spectral density, in this case, power spectral density uh, is another interpretation. And we can see here that depending on which definition I use, I'm going to get very different values for the uh, bandwidth. And so this is totally uh, normal. So each one of these, like I said, any of these definitions, there's none that's more real than the other. They're just useful in different ways. And so, for instance, we have the half power bandwidth, which is the first one that's illustrated here. The noise equivalent is the next uh, illustration. Null to null, again, that's the main lobe. And then we can go to 99% uh, power. And then we have the 35 dB and the 50 dB uh, bandwidths. And each one is different uh, and uh, useful in its own way. I want to just specify that like, if you wanted to look at this plot and figure out how they uh, came up with the 35 dB, it's not the first time that I get down to 35 dB. It's when the last time I hit 35 dB down from the maximum. So I keep going out. The bandwidth is not, you know, like the, first, the 3 dB was here the first time. But uh, really, uh, if it had some other oscillations, which is the case with the 35 dB, the, um, it's important to always go down until this, this uh, spectrum uh, no longer exceeds whatever threshold that was that we defined. Okay, so that has been the uh, definition of various bandwidths and an illustration with this sync squared uh, spectrum.